Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Lynn and today I will be flipping the Spellbinders September Club kits and as with all of my, the, my flip videos, I'll be making at least one flat, one layered, one interactive, and one pop-up card. Here's a quick look at all four cards that I'll be making in this video. Because it's going to be a rather lengthy video, what I'll do is timestamp it so that if there's if you're limited on time and there's only one particular card you want to see me make, you can just hover over the timeline and skip straight to that card. So as you can see, most of the um, sets here have a really lovely fall theme. I'll be crafting with the embossing folder of the month, the small and large die of the month, the APG die of the month, and the clear stamp and die of the month and I do have the glimmer of the month but I'll have to save that for a separate video so stay tuned for that one. Starting off with my flat card what I've done in advance here is I've already stamped out my sentiment and then I stamped with Versamark a clear ink and I just picked some of the small images, the fall themed images. So you get a few leaves, you get an acorn, a pumpkin, lots of fun little graphics. And anytime I see small um, stamps like that, the first thing I think to do is stamp out my own background. I wanted to keep the background subtle. So that's why I went with a clear Versamark ink when I did my stamping and I did clear heat emboss that and the sentiment. So it's got some lovely texture and a little bit of that glossy shine. What a Versamark ink will do when you stamp onto colored cardstock like I have, it just darkens the natural color of the cardstock. It doesn't really add... Um, a new color to it, but you can tell that there a change has um, happened when you stamp. But it was just a little bit too subtle, so that's why I went in with a colored pencil and just did a little bit of selective coloring. I didn't color in all of my stamped images because I think that would have made it a little bit too dense in terms of um, that darker color. But I went in and just randomly picked some images to color in with my color pencil. Uh, I just picked a shade slightly darker than my paper. And that gives it a little bit more interest. So some things you can see here are colored in, some of those um, stamped and embossed images are just the outline and so there's a it's a little mix there which I think is kind of fun. Moving on to my layered card I'm going to start off by creating just um a colorful little background and I'm I'm doing this right onto some scrap paper because I won't be using it as a background panel but instead I'll use it to die cut out of and I've just chosen some nice fall colors from my gelatos I have quite a few different sets they are sold in I think sets of I want to say 11 or 12, something thereabouts, and there are different ranges and different sort of collections. So I've actually got a mix. I picked it by color, not by set, because I have them all jumbled together at this point. And some of them, as it turns out, were a metallic um, color. So that just added a little bit more shine and interest. The palette that I'm working off of is um, from Karen Dash, and it's it's got one side that's perfectly smooth and one side that has a little bit of a rougher texture, which is great for something like your gelatos because that rough texture really grabs. Um, and so you can get a lot of that, that um, gelato off onto your palette. And I just spritzed it really quickly with some distilled water. And I'm using, these are little sponge 
triangles that actually come with when you buy the gelatos as one of those larger sets. It does come with some tools, a couple of sponges, and I think a paintbrush as well. You could also just use your fingers. Um, I'm, go I'm not going to actually show you this entire panel that I ended up um, creating, but in the end, I did just use my fingers because it's... Um, it was just faster and um, and it's kind of fun actually to get a little bit messy and just get right in there. Um, and with the triangle, especially the one that I use, it, it does have that those straight edges. So sometimes when you use your fingers, you can get a, a little bit of a softer edge. And so that's another good reason to, to just get your fingers in there and, um, and just have some fun. I am not caring too much about where I'm laying down those colors because like I said, I'll be die cutting from them. And ahead of time, I've already embossed this um, panel with um, this month's embossing folder, which is gorgeous. It does have a correct orientation, so do be mindful that you are using it in its correct orientation. But I love it because... and. This folder in particular, but also just embossing folders in general, because I'm focusing all of the color on these um, leaves, which are from the small die of the month. And it is a stitching die set, but I always feel like you don't have to necessarily do the stitching. The um, the designs and the holes that are put in there for you to stitch just make it look really interesting and lovely even without the actual um, embroidery thread. And so I want those to really have a really nice splash of color, but I sometimes feel like just a plain white background is too plain for me. And when that's the case, I just like to emboss another piece of white cardstock. So you have a little bit of white on white, but there's some texture in that embossed panel. And so while it's subtle um, and still doesn't take away from your um, focal image, it still um, and you know still offers that sort of white space that you might want to go for, but there's still some interest there. So if you're shy about leaving too much white space like I often am, I feel like embossing folders are the perfect answer because you still technically have a lot of white space, but you still have some interest and color. So I am going to try to position these leaves and you do get quite a few different uh, types of leaves. I think they're probably from different types of trees, but I don't really recognize them all, so I wouldn't be able to tell you <laughs> what species of tree they are from. But what I'm gonna try to do is position them in such a way that it feels like they are sort of organically just falling, as if they've just fallen off of a tree. And I chose leaves. Um, I did get die cut several, but I didn't die cut all of the panel um, that I uh, created with my gelatos, but I have enough of a variation going from sort of green to red. And so I did also try to um, sort of suggest that the older leaf, that maple leaf, I think, um, has fallen first because it's, it's the oldest, it's the um, most red. So onto my interactive card, which might be one of my favorites um, that I made in this series. So this is focusing on the APG die of the month. And as always, the um, I'm not going to really use this the <laughs> way it was designed necessarily because this has been designed so that you can create a 3D sort of um, gumball machine that will still fold flat and if you want to send it, you you can um, still fold it flat and pop it into an envelope and, and put it through the mail. I am just going to make a shaker card out of this. So there's the largest die that you see I've cut out of red, which will get you that gumball shape and um, two tabs on each side of the top of the gumball. 
and the uh, those tabs are used for the um, sort of that 3D um, shadow box kind of uh, style of card that APG is so great at designing. But if you don't want to use those, like um, me, <laughs> you can just snip those tabs right off. And the other thing that I really love about APG dies is that there's just so much attention to detail. So you've got these individual dies that um, give you all of the lovely sort of texture and details of the gumball machine. And I I actually just I cut it from a different shade of red, the um, the sort of ribbed kind of detailing. And this piece I'm working on here is a little sentiment plate. There's actually three different sentiments that will cut into the card and then one backer plate. So I've cut out of silver glitter card the um, outside um, cutting um, die. And then you can't cut the sentiment and and your uh, sentiment plate at the same time. The sentiment will not fit into that. So you do need to cut out your, the sentiment plate first, then a, uh, position your um, sentiment um, die into your die cut and die cut it a second time. And then I actually die cut a second um, backer plate in black so that the one in a million sentiment is a little bit more legible. And I did the same with this. This is sort of that slot piece where you put the coin in and you're, you do the little twisting um, action and your gumball will fall or um, fall into that little slot at the bottom. And I backed that with um, a little bit of black cardstock as well because it does have that little slit. So all of the detail is just wonderful because it's got that slit where your coin would normally be. And since that slit, you can see straight through. I didn't want you to see red. I wanted you to see black. And same with the bottom piece where your gumball would fall out. You can lift that flap. And since you can see through um, to the back panel, I didn't want you to see red, the red of the gumball machine, rather I want you to see black. And so that's why I backed it. You don't have a die for that, but it's a straight cut, so it's easy enough to add. And then you also get the top of your gumball machine, again, three separate dies. So one that gives you sort of the base to work off of. You get a separate die, which I've cut out of silver glitter card. That's sort of the top, maybe um, I'm using glitter to sort of be suggestive of metal. And then you get that bottom rim that has sort of that ribbed, um, like a rib sweater kind of um, pattern to it. And that's, I die cut out of just a darker shade of red, similar to um, those same accent pieces that I added to the base of the gumball machine. Being a shaker card, I am going to line this um, aperture window here with some foam. And I didn't mention that the largest die in this set, which cuts out the main gumball machine, it does not have the window automatically cut out for you. And that's so that if you wanted to use this die as it was intended, you could have a uh, second piece that, that you don't have that aperture cut out of, and that could go behind, um, and you could have like a different look back there through your little aperture window. So the aperture, um, is actually a separate die that you can layer and cut that window out of your gumball or choose not to. So you have that option. And it's just a really nice um, standard, really basic shape die. So it's great as just a rounded, it's not quite square. I think it's a little bit rectangular. It's a little bit taller than it is wide, but I think it's just a great, um, 
all around basic dye to have. I'm cleaning off my acetate with a little bit of alcohol. So if you find that you've got some smudgies or a little bit of adhesive on your acetate sheet, you can just spritz it with some alcohol or um, wipe it with a baby wipe or even with um, your uh, sanitizer gel, because anything that has a little bit of alcohol really, and um, that should that should remove sort of all of those oils and whatnot and, and get your acetate nice and, and clear and um, clean. I'm using this, I pulled out a bunch of different uh, confetti pieces, but I found this one, which I love. It's got a little bit of that uh, Aurora Borealis finish, so you can see all of that rainbow shine, and I feel like it really does look like little candies in there, so really, really love that. And being that they are these um, smaller confetti pieces, they're relatively flat too. So I only really needed one um, one layer of foam. And it's my it's my shaker foam. So it's about maybe I would say two to three millimeters thick. But that's enough. That's plenty for flat confetti like this. And you can see how large this gumball machine is. It's amazing. I, I thought I was going to put this onto a USA two size card, which measures four and a quarter by five and a half, but it really is too big for <laughs> that, I feel, because I wanted to add some mats and layers as well. So then I decided to um, create a larger card. So this is going to be a five by seven card. And I wanted to use um, this particular pattern of paper that I have because it's a really nice, fine sort of polka dot print, but I only have it in a six by six. So it would have left too large of my card base showing. So I decided to mat it with another piece of that same red cardstock that I used for my gumball machine. And so as you saw with my shaker, I, I do always like to add a, um, a second piece of acetate so that the shaker element is basically completely enclosed as its own element. And after I've added all of my mats and layers, now I can really just play with placement and I can tilt it. I can put it straight on. If I wanted at this point, I could even put a different background right behind just that um, aperture window. And I feel like it's just a lot easier for me to picture what the final card is going to look like when I have this as a unit that I can just look at with all of the shaker bits in it and everything. And so for me, the, the extra little bit of acetate, it's worth it um, to, to have that ability to kind of preview and move it around and um, get a nice good look at what the, the end um, card will, will look like. And so I um, did dot my foam with a little bit of liquid adhesive just in case if I needed to kind of move it around a little bit, that liquid adhesive will give me a little bit of wiggle room. But I didn't even use all of the little uh, additional dies that you have. So you've got coins, you've got a lot of little pieces that you could still add to make um, that gumball machine really come to life. So just lovely all of the detail pieces that you get. Now my final card will be a pop-up card and for this I'll be using the large die of the month and as well some other dies too. So I'm using the clear stamp and die of the month from this month but I'm also going to be using the clear stamp and die of the month from March of this year as well as the small die of the month also from March of this year. I have them all laid out on the left there just so that you can see. And I'm gonna start off with um, just assembly. So in the large die of the month, it's so fantastic. You get so much. You get these really big um, sort of fall harvest veggies. So you've got corn, you've got squash, you've got pumpkin. I've got the, um, this here is the, clear stamp of the month for this month. It does come with a coordinating 
die if you choose to get both the stamp and the die of the month. There's the option to just get the stamp if, alone if that's what you prefer. The reason I'm fussy cutting though is because I stamped out these gnomes both onto white cardstock as well as the leftover gelato backgrounds that I had. I just stamped right over those and I'm fussy cutting um, those out as a way to um, just speed up and not have to actually color the hat and clothing of my gnomes. So you can see on um, the gnome that just has the white, I did use the coordinating die to cut that out. And I only colored in some bits of him, like his skin, his nose and his hands, and his shoes. Because I knew that I would uh, be fussy cutting out his hat and his shirt from those gelato backgrounds that I made. So um, this is something that you can do from pattern papers as well. If you want to add a pattern to the clothing or the hat of your gnomes, um, that's another fun way of, of um, not having to color in everything. Okay, so the other uh, thing that I'll assemble is the, um, I guess it's sort of a tractor uh, truck that um, comes in the large die of the month. And this, this does end up being larger than I expected as well. <laughs> and you'll see that in a moment when I realize it. But with this tractor, there's also the... Um, I don't know what you call it. I guess it's like a wagon that it, it can it can pull behind it. And it has like even the hitch that attaches um, the little uh, wagon to, to or cart, I guess, to uh, the tractor to pull. And again, just tons, tons of detail here. You've got your seat. You have all of these little um, uh, added accents to the truck. You've got um, the different size wheels and the wheels are great. The wheels are awesome because they aren't, they look like they're perfectly circle, circular, but they're not the, the largest wheel. Actually, you know how like big trucks will have those wheels that, that have like really deep grooves in them. So these wheels are, are kind of suggestive of, suggestive of that because they do have that sort of bumpy um, outer edge. It's really, it's really fantastic. Um, we've got the steering wheel and I think there's this one piece which is sort of the handbrake or maybe the gear shift, but I decided to just leave that off because it, maybe I should have just die cut it out of a different color. I just didn't want another black, um, element. And then with the cart that, uh, trails behind, you even get a die that cuts out those wood slats. And I did just cut it out of some wood pattern paper that I have and look how fun that is. And so the idea is that you can load up that cart with all of your, um, sort of fall harvest veggies. So I think that's, um, a lot of, a lot of fun. Not how I'm using it on this card, but, um, but you'll see in a moment what I end up doing. I'm actually going to be making a Z fold pop-up card. So this is five by seven. I just took a standard five by seven card blank. And then the front of the card, I scored that and folded it back on itself. The second panel that I showed a moment ago is um, cut to three inches tall and 10 inches wide. And I scored it the exact same way as I scored the scored and folded the card base. So you along that 10 inch edge, you want to score and fold it directly in half at the five inch mark. And then you want to score um, at two and a half inches. And with the bottom panel, that's the three inch uh, panel. You just want to, when you go to attach this, and I'll show it again in a bit, um, you just want to attach, rotate it basically, and attach it so that the five inch stretch is along the front. So basically opposite of what your card base is. I'm quickly adding some mats and layers so that I can sort of build up my scene here. So I've just got some nice solid light blue solid color cardstock 
for my sky. And then I have this, um, it's stripey, so it's not super realistic for grass, but it's a nice green, which will be suggestive of my grass. And it's, it's got these stripes, and this again is from a 6x6 paper pad which I only have the one sheet. So this particular paper pad only had uh, exactly one of each style. So I had to to get enough paper to um, cover all of this. I did have to piece together two sections and I chose to do it on this middle um, panel here, which I think would be seen the least. But with that stripey detail, you can hardly really tell. I just butted it up really nice and snug and you can barely um, see that seam. I think I can see it because I know it's there. But if you didn't know to look for it, I don't think you would be able to see it. Okay, so here's how your Z fold is going to come together. You're going to glue that five inch edge of your uh, shorter piece here. Just put glue on half of it, the leftmost edge, and glue that to the front of your card panel. And then you can see how there's that zigzag or that Z fold. Before, before I glue down that other end, I'm actually going to uh, attach some, um, these are going to be my bridge pieces. So I'm making a Z fold pop-up box, um, sort of combined. And so this inner portion here, these bridge pieces are cut to, um, the width of the bridge is two and a half inches. And if you, and then I just scored two um, glue tabs on either end. So I'm just trying to attach these bridge pieces so that they are parallel, but lower than that top edge. So I just want it to be nice and straight. And um, you can see that it stretches across that two and a half inch um, sort of section. And I, I like using 3 8 inch glue tabs. So that's what I, I happen to um, add on both, on each end. And I cut myself three glue tabs. I wasn't sure, wasn't sure if I wanted to use all three. So I just made sure to leave myself enough space so that if I wanted to add a third one in between these two bridge pieces, I still have the option to do that but um, I don't have to decide that now. Um, this is my preferred way of attaching it, but um, I didn't want to have too many glue bridge pieces in there. Um, so that's why I only started with two. And then the way I like to attach these is I like to fold it down flat because ultimately this whole card should fold down flat. And for me, it's easier to ensure that it will fold flat if I attach it while it's folded because it will just naturally find the um, where it needs to attach on the other end. So that three inch tall section there, you just wanna fold that directly in half and then let those bridge pieces fall where they, wherever they fall <laughs> and that's that's where it should stick down. I'm using a liquid adhesive and so I'm just making sure that I give it a really really good burnish which you want to do regardless of the adhesive you use but I want to give it a second to grab before I open it straight away. And then to attach that final piece of that uh, three inch tall section again I just close my card right down on that last two and a half inch section and that should that should adhere to the what would normally be the inside of your card. Now comes the fun part. So I have all of these elements that I have um, die cut out of some of these I die cut out of that gelato background that I made earlier and didn't use all of. Some I just die cut out of solid color cardstock and I tried to give myself enough pieces to work with, hopefully, uh, so that I don't have to actually stop 
and add, uh, do any additional die cutting. I decided at this point that, yeah, I, I think I do want that third <laughs> bridge piece. So as you can see, you can still add your bridge pieces afterwards. It's possible to do. It's just you're working within a smaller space because everything is already attached all around it. So it might be a little bit more fiddly to, to add your bridge pieces after the fact, but it's still possible. So don't worry if you've forgotten or you change your mind like I did and want to add an additional piece, you can certainly do that. And as I attach my elements here, the the idea that I had, the look I was going for was that there's like these gnomes peeking out of um, maybe like a field of like a corn maze or something like that. So that's why I, I made so many um, ears of corn. And you don't get the full stock of the corn. I, I thought about, I considered possibly just hand cutting just some green, you know, branches and whatnot, because you do get the, the leaves um, that cover the corn, uh, which you could use just as, as leaves of um, the full stock. But I decided to just work with what we're given in um, the die set and and just do a lot of layering to to suggest that um, this is sort of a field of corn <laughs> and it's so much fun um, at this point to just to just play with the composition and I'm using my heavyweight acetate actually I think what I'm using technically here is a bit of packaging you know how sometimes you get, you buy stuff that has that sort of um, really thick plastic? You can just cut those down and use those um, as your acetate as well because they're nice and strong. They'll stand up. They'll hold, it, hold your die cuts straight up and, and they won't sort of, uh, it won't flop over on you. And to attach them, I'm just using bits of red line tape because that's also nice and strong as well so that will hold uh, really well and it will grab rather instantly as well so you don't have to um, wait for anything to dry. I also just find for plastics and whatnot like acetate that a dry adhesive tends to work better for me. What I'm going for is as I attach my different elements I kind of want more of the scene to be revealed and so I'm constantly folding the card completely flat so that I can make sure that anything I want to be a little bit of a surprise uh, for when you open the card it isn't immediately noticeable when the card is closed and so that's why I keep you know closing everything down the other reason to do that is as you're attaching items, if uh, especially to the pop-up uh, box area, you could technically attach things so that they're hanging outside the confines of the box, but you want to make sure that when everything is folded down, it still sits within your 5x7 card. So that's the other reason to be constantly checking and making sure that uh, your card will still fold down and will still fit in the uh, size envelope that you're expecting. Now, I did attach the, my little wagon to my tractor and um, realized <laughs> that there's just not enough space for both of them on this card. Um, I, I thought about different things to do, like wrapping, wrapping the... Um, uh, the the tractor around that bend around that z fold but um but yeah in the end i just i i just had to snip off the the wagon part and uh just use the tractor by itself and so um so I'll have to make, you know, whenever I craft with this uh, set again, at least I'll already have the wagon part made <laughs> and, <laughs> and I can just add another um, hitch to, to attach it to, to a tractor. The clouds here that I'm using, I got from the March small die of the month and the additional gnomes that I, I'm featuring on this card are from the March clear stamp and die of the month and you can see they're 
they're all sort of relatively the same size and they're um so they're super fun it's nice to kind of mix and match i love that we're provided with more gnomes that are in the same style because then you really can use them all together you can see here when it folds flat you don't even see three of the gnomes you just see the one and it's not until you open it that you see um, the other four gnomes. And so I love that you get that little bit of a surprise. So here's the final recap of the four cards that I made today. This one is my flat card featuring the clear stamp and die of the month. Pretty simple, but I love being able to stamp my own background. And um, it may be subtle, but that's kind of you know the look I was going for. This one is my layered card, and it features the embossing folder of the month and the small die of the month, which does have the sentiment as well as those stitches leaves. This is my interactive shaker card which features the APG die of the month and is this really really fun gumball machine. Tons tons of details. Um, I didn't even use all of the details that you could possibly add but I just I love I love this and it may be my favorite but I, I think I might actually like um, my pop-up card the best because it's just so much fun. It's a Z-fold pop-up box card and it features not only the large die of the month but the clear stamp and die of the month from uh, this month as well as the clear stamp and die and the small die of the month both from March. And I love that there's the, the little baby gnome that's actually um, kind of orthogonal to all of the other ones. So when you turn it, that's when you see that little guy. So I love all of the little surprises that you can really tuck in to this style of card. Let me know if you have a favorite out of these four in the comments below. I hope that you enjoyed my video today and if you did, please like, comment, and share this video. It definitely helps my video get out there to other viewers here on YouTube and consider subscribing to my channel and ringing that notification bell so that you get notified whenever I post new videos to my channel. Thanks so much. Until next time, happy crafting and have a fantastic day. Bye!